Yoha! So that's again. So the fourth fourth video that cooked up in uh, Chris's brain about a minute and a half ago. <laughs> we're gonna see. We're gonna talk about what we, as their instructors, are looking for during the test, which we also call a review. But it's an ongoing review, and the only reason they are testing is because they've been reviewing for the last three or four classes. Yeah, one time a week, by the way. Yeah. So. So in talking about this, when the things I want to see as their instructor, some of these students have been with me now about a year. Some of them have only been with me since the beginning of the year. Um, COVID kind of put a damper on training for a while. And so there was somewhat of a restart for a lot of the students. Uh, for many of them, they're going to Orange Belt, um, which is a, a, a big delineation going from beginning to now learning some more advanced patterns, more advanced concepts um, and getting excited about that. So the first thing is you're going to see during the last review is what we call techniques or patterns. They do not have to finish them. What they need to do is show me that they understand what they're doing in those patterns. Um, I don't need them to do all of thrusting palms as long as they understand that they're creating a bracing angle, that they're borrowing balance, that they're pushing them to their third leg, because in reality in the street, they're not gonna use all thrusting palms. They might use what we call a snippet of action. It might just be the bracing angle forward and the thrusting palms ends the fight. It, and also might be what we call the catalyst and response, that they also know what the catalyst is, what their uh, the attacker's intent is, and for them to be able to do it themselves. That's why we do what we call a technique line, where they both throw the attack and the defense so that they can understand the, the catalyst, the response and intent of a pattern. Um, I know that in talking about snippets, uh, Professor Cole wanted to, to talk about that. Well, what is a snippet of action? It's a Kodiak moment. <laughs> Uh, Alibaba. Anyways, it's a Kodiak, a Kodak moment. It's a picture in a point in time and space where an important thing is happening within the pattern, within the sequential flow of the pattern, the technique. Now, a snippet can be, we can, we can feature the snippet at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. It doesn't matter uh, really where that's, where we hide, what snippet we highlight, but each pattern, each technique has snippets of action that you can then put together with snippets of action from other patterns. And that's the true goal of understanding what a syllabus is about, whether it's postmodern Kempo or it's Christian Kempo. The syllabus in, in Christian Kempo is a lot smaller, but it's turbocharged. It takes a lot of the snippets that we know from 154 patterns, 200 and, 250, with two, 250 with the extensions, and we say, okay, what can we put together here? not just slap a name on it, not just borrow a, a, a pattern from something else and then slap a new name on it. You know, it's, it's, it's in the doing, it's not in the naming. Yeah. And that's what snippets of action are. And that's what, we're, that's what Chris and I wanna see. There are the things that we stressed in, in class showing up in a pressured situation like a test, where everybody's nervous. Everybody's nervous. Which brings us to the next point is what we call CMT, Concepts and Principles that as the students are showing us those snippets of actions, they'll, they will have learned a lesson. We call them lessons. And so constantly asking our students, so what is the, the major lesson in this pattern? Or what lesson is in this sequence of motion that we call a snippet? What did this snippet teach us? Whether it's borrowed balance, whether it's a margin for error, whether it's manipulating our, our opponent's height with their depth. Those are the things that our students are learning through these patterns through these snippets of action. We want to see that that knowledge has not only been transferred, that when we ask them, they can think about it and go, well, these are the different lessons that I've learned. Does that apply to what I just did? Uh, that's how CMP is important to us. And a big thank you to Mr. Rich Hale. Um, in his list, he has a uh, paper in which is a guideline for his black belt tests uh, to see whether they understand the concepts and principles in the system. In each of the 154 base patterns or the 250 with extensions that they 
have at least a minimal understanding of concepts and principles within them. And that's something that we have continued in both postmodern Kempo and in Christian Kempo is the CMP are, are more important to me than the actual pattern themselves or completing the pattern. Comments on that one? No. Okay. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> and brings us lastly to sparring. What are the things I want to see when the students are sparring? Mainly the things you just saw in video three. That, that high neutral or high aggressive neutral, that their heels are up and that they're able to move. That go means go and they get off the line of the attack and aren't just standing there waiting to get hit. That they aren't a deer in the headlights when the center referee says go or, or fight or hajime, that they're moving. Number two, that they're using their hips to control their feet. That as they're going one, two, three, that their hips and foot has already formed the weapon and that they're ready to go. Um, that they're also putting correct weapons, correct targets. That they're not just playing what I call rock and suck and robots. That they aren't just throwing feet or fists. That they aren't just leaving a fist out to, to connect with somebody. That it needs to be clean. I need to see this contact and, this, and the control and snapping motion. That if they are striking towards the head, that they're breaking the plane of the shoulder. That these are the things in which I'm looking for, and that uh, Professor Cole's going to talk about the, the debriefing that's going to occur during the sparring session next week. Okay, so we I'm going to jump back up to pattern completion. Do not complete the pattern. Well, you will not ever, I don't think, and I never have, completed a pattern if you have canceled the, the attacker's dimensional zones while manipulating your own. Now, that's a very important very, very important distinction. I'm going to cancel that guy while I manipulate, as Chris did earlier. He showed you how to manipulate his dimension. Because if you can cancel all three of the attacker's dimensions, we gain the dimension of time. Right. Thank you, Clyde. Thank you, Clyde. Clyde O'Brien. Great guy. Okay, so that's what I'm really looking for when it comes to do not complete the pattern. I mean, they're going to be nervous enough. It's fine. R-I-C-I. -I, response intent is greater then you got that backwards. Got that <laughs> Response and intent is greater oh, yeah, is. <laughs> than the catalyst and the intent. My, he's got a catalyst. Right foot forward, please, sir. He's got a catalyst, one. And he wants to hit me with the other one. Oh, same thing in sparring, whether it's a pattern or not. What do I do? Well, I do the simplest thing on his, on his catalyst. My response is here. His intent is to punch me, but my intent is to stop him from hitting me because he now has to go he has to follow me so my response first of all is very efficient see mm -hmm. that's a great way most of our patterns are going to be something like he goes here then he wants to throw the other punch and then i have to do this and oh i slipped off his arm because he's got hair on his arm and it's a, it's a staticky day and we're all slippery well that didn't work that's a, i pre-planned that in my head right but if i go strictly by a pattern this is my first motion here he can still do a lot of things, so my response did not cancel enough. But this response canceled everything that he could do and gave me the time. I only canceled what? Width. Width. I only canceled width. Only one. They, they say in Kempo that you got to cancel two, at least two or three. Three is the best. But something efficient like this, from, from sparring, by the way, <laughs> and I want to tell you why this is important, because when I get in my fighting stance here, and flip the lap. When I get in my fighting stance, this is my inward block. I've already got it. Guy says, ready, fighting stance, boom, I got the inward block. That's what sparring teaches me. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I got the pattern, <laughs> I got the patch. So this idea here that this is already blocking, this is already on the line of entry, as we we're gonna say, basically this motion here just boom. That's sparring going sideways. And we have a lot of people to thank for the way we do sparring. Uh, first off, in no particular order, uh, we've got C.J. Uh, Muhammad, um, his use of what we call walking the horse, and is an influence in what we call Knight's pattern, getting off the line, and hips control feet. Number two is Bob White and his successful uh, series of fighters all the way from the 70s till today. Um, both colored belt and black belt teams of fighting in Southern California. Um, and Bob Harris, 
also in Southern California, uh, a great influence on some of the particulars of how we do sparring. And uh, Professor Cole's son, Jack, uh, Mr. Rascally Rabbit himself. Uh, and uh, when I first started taking lessons with Mr. Cole, Jack scared the snot out of me because I was woefully inept at sparring. And Jack helped raise the level, helped raise the bar as to what is expected in sparring and giving us some of the tools and, and the Petri dish, shall we say, in understanding what sparring is. How do we, what is a high aggressive neutral? What is one, two, three? What is go means go? A lot of these things come from the Petri dish that was his garage 12 years ago. So big thank you to those that are listed and probably more that that I didn't think to, to mention. Yeah. I have one. Oh. Actually, one and a half. I'd like to thank my creator. So I'm going to get emotional, I think. I'd like to thank my creator for his word, his scriptures, because in those scriptures, I found myself. The parable of the man with talents. I am the one. I have been for decades the man with one talent. Um, I buried everything I did. I only gave it to a few, few people that I would work with directly. But I did not share it. I did not spread it. And when I read the parable, I understood that I am that man. That, that is me. I want to be the man with three talents. The only way to do that is to give it away, to share. I may never get to be the man with five talents. I don't know. But if I can strive to be the man with three talents, that's the only way to do that is to share what we're doing here. Sharing with Chris, sharing with with Letitia and Katrina and anybody else who's fallen in our path and didn't know what they were going to get when they got here. <laughs> so the creator, my creator, that's the, that's the person I'm most thankful to.